Hi, I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics, and today we're going to do a, um, a video that people have been asking me for for quite a long time. If there's any questions online I get more than anything else is choosing between the Addiction XL and the Addiction X. Today I'm going to compare the two. I'm going to give you a little idea of what I like about both and what's a little different about it and um, maybe try and demonstrate a few maneuvers with each plane doing exactly the same thing. The first really big advantage of the Addiction X over the XL is size. Uh, this fits right in my SUV, uh, can set it in wings on. Uh, the larger one, the wings have to be taken off and that is a disadvantage, although um, it's so easy to put on and off, it's not that big a deal, but it's certainly worth mentioning. Um, this flies on one 2200, this flies on two 2200s, and that's another advantage. You get a lot more flight time with a little less battery. Okay, the one thing for sure is this aircraft is the XL, and it is absolutely a more formidable aircraft. It is bigger feels bigger and it's it's actually a bigger aircraft than it looks um, the aircraft itself everything is a little bit slower than the uh, than the X and if you watch it coming in and see it as it's getting close this is a big airplane um, the one thing people always say about larger aircraft is they're a little easier to fly and that is uh, exactly true with the Addiction XL. Uh, I believe it's easier to fly. I, I do think it flies uh, kind of straighter lines and I think it's just because it's bigger. It's not a better airframe necessarily but to be honest with you I don't know if I enjoy this one more a hundred percent but if I'm flying a demo or anything like that this is a plane I would go to because I think it has a better presence in the air. And I think all the maneuvers look a little better because it's just larger. This one also tends to be a bit more uh, buoyant. Uh, it feels a lot better through a lot of the low slow maneuvers. And it's only because of its size. It's not like a superior aircraft in any way to the Addiction X, it's just different. But again, as you watch it come in, it flies just as slow. Just because it's bigger doesn't mean you can't fly it as slowly, because you certainly can. As you can see, this thing is almost stopped half the time. But it's just such a beautiful aircraft to fly. Covering this airplane when we are uh, in good wind conditions like we are right now is almost miraculously easy. Um, because it's less responsive, uh, because it is larger, like when I'm going like this, you know, it just doesn't respond as fast. I'll do this with the Addiction X and you'll see it's a lot quicker. So everything seems a little bit more uh, uh, slow and lumbering, but uh, uh, this plane is so responsive and uh, Right now, it looks so nice because the wind is so low. It, uh, the plane just looks beautiful when it's uh, doing this. All of the rolling Harrier maneuvers and stuff like that is exactly the same. It's a little bit nicer um, in that it's uh, just a little slower, a little easier to control. And apart from that, I think uh, because it's on a 6L, it's just a bit more powerful as well. I just absolutely love its ability to fly and track on straight lines and stop on a dime. Everything you will see me do with the Addiction X can be done fairly easy with the XL. It's not that one plane can do anything the other one can't. Mm -hmm. 
obviously knife edge with this looks a bit more impressive, but you know, this has so much rudder authority like the other that, you know, it's easy to just stand it up from the knife edge. Okay, amongst the things that I like the most about it, and the big difference is, again, size. You know, this plane just ends up in my car more often. I could fly this every single day. It's much more, um, again, less batteries to take with you. This plane, I believe, is a bit more agile. Um, and it, it uh, rudder authority is a little stronger um, just because it's a bit smaller plane. So uh, it does everything a little bit quicker. The new wing design on this is just incredible and on top of that, you know, there's these new servos are, are just outstanding. They're, in my opinion, one of the best values in RC right now is the servos that are in the Addiction X and uh, V2 and the Addiction XL V2, uh, the new NXT uh, 100s and the 80s. Um, they are miraculously strong, super fast, and they center just perfectly and that to me is exactly what I need in the small servos because it's a little difficult sometimes to find small servos that really center well and these do. Anyway, uh, this particular plane uh, I think does everything as crisply and as, uh, and as beautifully and smooth as, as the Addiction XL. It just has a little bit more uh, aerobatic tendencies. Again, a bit more athletic and agile. So. Um, I'll try and do some of the same maneuvers and compare it side by side. Again, when it's harrying and doing stuff like this, uh, beautiful, light on its feet. But when you watch, you'll see that it's just not quite as floaty as the other. Again, this is still an addiction and it's still very floaty and light. But the other one just has a much uh, bigger and more formidable feel. Again, uh, you know, I said the other one has such nice straight line abilities, but of course this one does too. Um, it's, it's a great aircraft. But I think the Addiction XL probably has a, a little better ability to just maintain those lines. Where this one really shines is this kind of stuff. Like I said, it is a bit more athletic. Um, everything you can see is a little quicker. Now in these quick flipping maneuvers and things like this, you see it's really quick. I mean, it's really quick. Um, this thing will just flip around itself and uh, lock right back in really quick. And again, it's just a little more athletic uh, in that way. Again, the stuff we discussed before about, you know, really clean lines. This plane's ability to just stop and turn on a dime is pretty amazing. And again, a lot of that is due to its smaller size. And this plane climbing like this is pretty incredible. And again, uh, the new wing, uh, I believe, uh, is really making this a better aircraft. And again, I love flying it, so I'm a little prejudiced. But there's not many planes that can do what you just saw. You know, this wing never was a wing that loves to uh, tumble like an extra or something like that. But even knife edge spins like this, this plane can get really get going. I think rudder response is a little better on this plane because it is smaller. As you can see it really responds quickly to that rudder input.
Uh, here's another maneuver it does well, this elevator with the mix in it. If you watch, this thing is going to fall really nice and fast. It's literally almost falling vertical. And uh, I really love that. It looks great. You'll notice with this little uh, quick flip how, um, how floaty it is. But this one here, if I want to make that flip uh, a little bit quicker, uh, because it is a little smaller, a little uh, uh, more agile. Again, you know, the rolling harriers with this plane are very easy. Um, just as easy as the XL. Neither plane really has what I would consider a deficiency. I mean, literally none. You know, this is just a, you know, that rolling harrier we can keep going all day long because the plane is so responsive. This plane really is remarkably smooth. And, you know, we can turn it here on knife edge and fly away and not have to worry about losing any altitude. You know, stuff like that is really important, you know, when you're really trying to make your flights look good. It's easy to say that the XL, you know, is a little bit easier to hover only because it's just larger, not quite as, uh, uh, responsive to the uh, flight controls. Um, I did a quick demonstration with the other one, like this, and you can see how this one's a bit quicker, uh, a bit more responsive. And when it's not quite as uh, quick to respond, uh, obviously a, the, a little bit slower makes it just a little more, uh, I don't know, more docile, maybe a little easier to adjust. But I'll bring it up into a hover now and you can see how, you know, how super easy it is to hover. What you'll notice, these are the, uh, the uh, NXT 100s. Um, these are Precision Aerobatics' new servo. And I have to tell you, they're by far the best servo they've ever made. And I haven't seen another servo in this class that, you know, really performs at this level and is so consistent. But even better, it's, a, it's actually a very good value. This servo, as you can see, is very, very fast. I mean, this thing is moving at the blink of an eye. And with 3D, uh, in most cases, you need a really, really fast response. And in its, in its class, this is just unbelievably quick. But if you'll watch when it comes back to center, it doesn't move. It's absolutely solid. And centers exactly to the same spot every time. And ultimately, that's all that's important because when you come out of a maneuver and you want to stay level, if the servo is fishing a little bit or just not finding center, um, with these very large surfaces, a very little bit of movement can actually make the plane rise three or four feet. I mean, just a fraction of movement in the servo can make the plane go up three or four feet. And another really important element for 3D is strength. Um, these servos, I'm displaying the, uh, um, the specs for this servo. But these servos are an extremely strong and when you're wanting to slam the plane into a wall or do anything that requires a lot of torque and the, the uh, surface not blowing back, the, the servo has got to deliver adequate torque because if it's not, even though it's very easy to deflect it all the way, if there is wind resistance on it, the wind is pushing against the servo and if that pressure is stronger than the servo, you will not get full deflection out of, out of the servo. So adequate torque is really important to make sure that in the wind, in a strong maneuver, in tumbling and things like that, we have the ability to keep the surface deflected exactly to the point that you want it. Now, this is the NXT-80. And the NXT-80 is what I'm gonna be using in the Addiction X. Now, this servo is, again, so strong and, and fast for its size. You see it's a little you know, smaller than the uh, NXT-100s, but it's also a high-voltage servo. 
The NXT 100s, of course, are high voltage. These are the new servos. Um, running on higher voltage, um, although it requires a BEC that delivers higher voltage, uh, the performance is a lot better. It's, it's stronger, faster, and everything else that a little more voltage can add. So um, these are my servos of choice. Uh, they're a great value, and in my opinion, they perform as well as anything in the industry.